week four of the fantasy baseball season, and here's a few hitters I looked at off the wire this week. The first hit of Brian De La Cruz of the Miami Marlins. So De La Cruz, we've seen some flashes from him over the last couple seasons, but so far this year, he's off to a better start, I believe, than he has been in season past years, Brian De La Cruz. So right now, I know this Marlins team, one of the worst teams in all Major League Baseball. It's pretty close between them and the Chicago White Sox, but De La Cruz available in 70% of fantasy leagues and he's getting the job done putting the ball in play showing some power and actually helping this small one team winning some ball games of late on the season for De La Cruz five home runs 14 RBIs a stolen base 10 runs scored a 275 average and a 287 on base so the two downsides to De La Cruz he strikes out a whole lot 26 K's and 91 at bats and he don't draw walks at all a 287 on base to his 275 average obviously is in a good rate so right now like i said out there in 70 percent of fantasy leagues and if you need some power he'll definitely bring it for fantasy owners april 15th versus the giants one for five two rbis april 16th versus the giants one for four run an rbi is stolen base april 17th versus the giants two for four with a homer april 19th at the cubs one for four with a homer and april 20th in a double header at the cubs one for seven but he did homer once again and three RBIs. So now three home runs in the last four games for Brian De La Cruz, which is great, obviously, but the only downside is he's not putting the ball in play as much. Six strikeouts in the last three games. But like I said, if you need power and someone is getting the everyday opportunity and his exit VOs have been good as well for De La Cruz, hitting the ball with a good rate and hitting it hard, he's definitely someone I would add this week. The next hitter is Blaze Alexander the Arizona Diamondbacks, a lot of hype about Alexander coming out of spring training, and he's not an everyday player just yet he's on a D-back team, but he's starting to play a little bit more in the year. Three home runs, 13 RBIs, nine runs scored, a stolen base, a 333 average, and a 393 on base. So Blaze Alexander, another guy who's got good pop. Obviously, it's his rookie season, and a lot of hype about him last season, and now coming into spring training, and so far, it's as he was advertised, April 16th versus the Cubs, two for five, three RBIs. April 17th versus the Cubs, one for two. April 19th at the Giants, three for five, a homer, five RBIs, two runs scored. And April 20th at the Giants, one for four with a run and an RBI. So like I said, he's getting an everyday opportunity a little bit more of late here as Alexander. He does qualify at second in shortstop, which is great. Obviously, where those are two pretty weak positions, in my opinion, that and catcher in fantasy baseball and right now he's widely available is blaze alexander in tons of league the next hitter ahmed rosario with the tampa bay race so rosario we know he was a former top prospect four or five seasons ago in the new york met system but it just never panned out for him over there and he was in the francisco lindor trade a couple years ago but uh, right now with his new team in tampa bay he's playing good baseball with rosario even though he's bounced around the last few years with the guardians then traded to the Dodgers last season, and now here with Tampa Bay, two home runs, 10 RBIs. Six runs scored, three stolen bases, a 343 average, and a 352 on base. So Rosario, he was never a hitter that was going to draw a lot of walks, but he's a guy that's got a good swing. And like I said, he was a former top prospect for a reason, and he showed some signs in terms of stealing bases and hitting the ball hard is Rosario but right now Tampa Bay they just find these type of players they signed them to a cheap deal in the offseason and he's paying off right now when he qualifies at second short and outfield and over the last two weeks he's hitting 395 with two homers seven RBIs so the last few games for Rosario April 16th versus the Angels two for six a run an RBI April 17th versus the Angels two for four a homer two RBIs April 18th versus the Angels two for four run an RBI April 19th at the Yankees, one for four. And April 20th at the Yankees, two for four. What a stolen base. So the last four out of five games, he has multiple hit games, is Rosario. Like I said, good qualification. Second short in outfield could definitely help many ways in fantasy owners. And right now, this is most likely the last chance for owners to go out there and get him, where he's only available in 51% of fantasy leagues. Next hitter is Travis Darno of the Atlanta Braves. So Darno, he's starting to find that power stroke. He hit three home runs a few games ago. And he homered once again in yesterday's ball game on the year four home runs, 12 RBIs, 10 runs scored, a 260 average, and a 339 on base. So Sean Murphy, we know, is banged up for the Atlanta Brave team and still not swinging a bat as of early last week. So right now, Darno, he's going to get more of a leash, I think, and they're not going to have to rush back, I believe, is the Atlanta Brave team 
is Murphy because Darno's playing better over the last few games. And this Brave team now, they're starting to get things going, winning six games in a row. So Travis Darno the last few games, April 15th at the Astros, 1 for 5 over on April 17th at the Astros, 0 for 4. April 19th versus the Rangers, like I said, 3 for 4, 3 homers, 6 RBIs. And April 20th versus the Rangers, 1 for 1 with a homer, 2 RBIs, and 2 runs scored. So Darno's playing good baseball the last couple games here, starting to get things going. And he was a former top prospect many seasons ago, was Darno in the Toronto Blue Jays system. Then he got traded to the New York Mets in that R.A. Dickey deal. And it didn't pan out for him over there in New York, but with this Brave team, he's been a solid backup. And a guy who's showed some pop, so right now, well, he's getting the start and gig with Murphy out. And still no timetable 100% when Murphy returns. And we don't catch his weak position for the most part. Darno, I would give an ad to this week, and he's available, like I said, in 85% of Fantasy League. Next it is Dalton Varsho of the Toronto Blue Jays. So Dalton Varsho, a former catcher now, playing at just the now fielder for this Blue Jay team. And on the season, five home runs, 11 RBIs, two stolen bases, 14 runs scored. A 238 average and a 304 on base. Of Varsho last season, he did go 20 homers, 61 RBIs, a low average of 220. But he did have 16 stolen bases, and I think Varsho, he could do similar type of stats. But hopefully that batting average bumps up for him. So right now available in 52% of fantasy leagues. And he's starting to find his power stroke as well. April 16th versus the Yankees, one for three with two runs, a stolen base. April 17th versus the Yankees, two for four, two homers, three RBIs. April 19th at the Padres, 0 for four. And April 20th at the Padres, a monster game, three for four, a homer, three RBIs, a stolen base. Two runs sc- scored. So Varsho, he's going to bring power. He's going to bring stolen bases. I know his strikeout rate will go up as the season goes on, even though he's only struck out 17 times in 63 at-bats, which it's down a little, even though it's still a little bit high, is that strikeout rate. So right now, Varsho showing power. He's in a solid Toronto Blue Jay lineup. And like I said, if you need pop and an outfield or utility hitter, I think Kelpone is available and most likely the last chance to get him this week. At 52%, the next hitter, Mitch Hanniger of the Seattle Mariners. The so Hanniger, we know he's a power hitter with 25, 30 home run potential, but injuries have played a part in holding him back over the last few seasons. But right now, Hanniger's getting it going in the early going on the year. Three home runs, 13 RBIs, 10 runs scored, 275 average, and a 351 on base. So we know this Mariners team, they're looking for offense, and they've been an up and down club. This season, even though they're starting to get things going, winning four in a row, even though it was versus the Reds in the West, one was versus the Colorado Rockies, which they got a doubleheader today at Coors Field. But anyway, Hanig in the last few games, April 15th versus the Reds, two for three, a homer, three RBIs, two runs scored. April 16th versus the Reds, two for four, an RBI. April 17th versus the Reds, one for five, a run and a ribbon. April 20th at the Rockies, 0 for four. So like I said, Hanniger. In the past, he's had power where he's hit 25, 30 home runs in the season. I know he's up there in age more, is Hanniger, but he still could provide some power for fantasy owners. And he's having a resurgence type of year in the early going. He's more of a 12-team league or deeper type of head. But right now, he can help in those categories. And his on-base is very good as well with 351. Available in 65% of leagues. The next hit is Jesse Winker. Of the Washington Nationals. I mentioned Winker in his, as an ad last week, and now he's been added in 27% of leagues, but still out there right now is Winker in 71% of leagues on the season. He's getting an everyday opportunity, and Winker, he's definitely changed his swing up and the mechanics of his swing as well on the season. Two home runs, eight RBIs, 12 runs scored, two stolen bases, a 339 average, and a 455 on base. So Winker, the last couple seasons, He's been a 200 hitter, and even last year, 199 on the year with one home run. So like I said, he's changed his approach. He's cut down on the swing a little bit, and he's always been a good on-base guy. Even last season, he hit 199, but he had a 320 on base. And so far this year, he's still patient at the plate, drawing his walks, 455 on base. And he's getting an everyday opportunity for this national team. So right now, it's a perfect player to pick up off the wire where he's getting an everyday chance and then also for the Nationals it's good as well where obviously towards the MLB trade deadline unless this team really comes out of nowhere and is a sleeper team they'll be trading away veteran pieces and Winker they could trade for a good piece I believe is Washington if he's going to have good value and play well 
the rest of the season because we know one of their top prospects, James Woods, is down there in the minors. And he's a guy that's got good power and he could be a cornerstone for the franchise. But anyway, the last few games for Winker, April 16th at the Dodgers, two for three, a home or two RBIs. April 17th at the Dodgers, one for four with a run. April 19th versus Houston, 0 for three with an RBI. And April 20th versus the Astros, one for four with two RBIs. So right now, Winker playing great baseball. Batting average is way up there. On base is up there. Power, not so much there, but we saw a few years ago where Winker had a breakout year in Cincinnati, but the last couple years with Seattle and Milwaukee, he hasn't done much, but right now, since he's playing good baseball, he's a good ad this week. So this Harrison Bader, the New York Mets, Harrison Bader so far off to a great start for this New York Mets team, and he's definitely been a catalyst in the year. We're going to help this Mets team get up there and win six games in a row. So right now, Bader, he's available in tons of leagues at 94%, and we know he's always been a hard-nosed player, always a good base stealer, and showed some pop in the past, but injuries have been a concern and held them back in his career. And I believe it's not going to hold up for Bader, but right now, while he's playing well, he's definitely in there. On the year, one home run, six RBIs, nine runs scored, four stolen bases, a 306 average and a 338 on base. So like I said, available 94% of fantasy leagues. And he's had some clutch hits in the early going for this New York Met team. April 16th versus the Pirates, 0 for 2. April 15th versus the Pirates, 1 for 3, you run 2 RBIs, a stolen base. April 16th versus the Pirates, 0 for 2. April 17th versus the Pirates, 1 for 4, a homer, 2 RBIs. April 19th, what a game at the Dodgers, 4 for 5, a run, an RBI, a stolen base. And April 20th at the Dodgers, 0 for 5. So Bader, like I said, hard-nosed player. He's always hustling. He's always playing a great center field, a former goal glover as well. And he's been an underrated signing, no doubt about it, for this New York Met team. But in terms of fantasy baseball, right now I think it's early season. Hot start for Harrison Bader, and it's not going to keep up. But right now, well, he's playing good, and he's a guy going out there producing and playing every day for the New York Mets. I believe I would give him an ad this week. 12 team weeks of deep. Should I look to Ed's Ryan O'Hearn of the Baltimore Orioles? So O'Hearn, he's off to a great start in the early going. And this Oriole team, they're loaded everywhere and they still got tons of guys in the minor leagues that are ready to go as well so on the season four home runs six rbis 11 runs scored a 288 average and a 351 on base so right now o'hearn we know he's a power hitter he's got 15 25 home run potential he's been a big ad this week off the wire added in 40 percent of leagues still out there right now 56 percent of fantasy leagues and i think he helped fantasy owners in power on base percentage and average april 14th Versus the Brewers, two for three, a homer, two RBIs. April 15th versus Minnesota, two for five, a homer, an RBI, two runs scored. April 16th versus the Twins, two for five, a homer, two RBIs, two runs scored. April 17th versus the Twins, 0 for two. And April 19th at the Royals, 0 for five. So O'Hearn showing power, like I said. He's playing pretty much every day, even though, like I said, there's a lot of rookies down there that are ready to go for this Baltimore Oriole team where someone's going to lose playing time. Either O'Hearn possibly, Austin Hayes is another possibility because we've seen Colton Castle, Jordan Westberg, and Jackson Holiday play, even though Holiday struggled so far with this Baltimore team. They're going with the youth movement, even though they're a contender for sure with these players ready. But right now, O'Hearn's producing and putting up numbers. And I'll give him an ad this week in the final hitter. I looked at off the wire. Like I said, one of those young hitters in that Baltimore Orioles system. Heston Kerstad of the Baltimore Orioles. So Kerstad, he's tearing it up in the minor leagues. And I think we're going to see him in the major leagues sooner than later in a week or two if he continues this. Because right now, he's going off in the minor leagues. 10 home runs, 30 RBIs, a stolen base, and a 359 batting average. So he's doing everything down there is Kerstad for this Baltimore Orioles team. And like I said, they got a youth movement going. They got tons of prospects. Another guy down there as well, Stower, pitcher Cade Pavix, so tons of players on that roster for Baltimore. And Kerstad, well, he's tearing it up in the minor leagues. And Austin Hayes, he might lose the spot like I mentioned. I would give Kerstad an ad this week. Right now, he's available still in a decent amount of fantasy leagues. But once he gets called up, he's going to be owned in over 50%. So right now, well, he's tearing it up. The mine is his Kerstad. And he's still out there in 67% of fantasy leagues. Like I said, before it's too late to get him, this would be the time to get it because I believe in a week or two with the Rule 5 stuff and whatever, Kerstad can help this team in a big way. And I'll give him an ad this week. So that's a few hitters I looked at in week four of the fantasy baseball season.